All right. A person is a man because he is performing the role of a man. Or a person is a man because he looks like a person performing the role of the man. Or a person is a man because he is looking at men performing roles of men. With that said, I will start this presentation with going through my inquiry question, the three parts of this project, and short description in this project's relation to this education. So this winter, uh, I started this project with um, watching television and I saw a uh, show about fishermen. It was narrated by a deep male voice. Waves high as mountains in the search of a treasure hidden on the ocean floor in the deadly ice cold Bering Sea. So I had to take some photos of the TV and I put them on the wall in my studio. At the same time, I was uh, reading a book called The Masculine Mystique, uh, containing um, some essays, one about Jackson Pollock as a uh, role model of masculinity after the world, Second World War. And I tried to put these two things together, but it was more a hunch at that time and I couldn't really explain it in a good way and I got some criticism about that. So, but anyway, I decided to make five different booklets that each would um, have its own angle on investigation of uh, masculinity archetypes and how they are used uh, as forms of propaganda. So how have as archetypes of masculinity such as the frontiersmen or the strong handyman being created? And might we say today that they are used as forms of propaganda? Why is this question important for society? Might it be that it contributes to the problem of toxic masculinity in our contemporary society? So the parts of this project Oh, so, I'm sorry, I'm having a bit of technical difficulties here. So both of the projects uh, the creation process, but also it's uh, meeting the public. And first of all, we have the booklets that are the sore, the core of this project. They are supposed to be presented in a constal where there are a sofa and two armchairs where one, I as the initiator of this project will be sitting and working, working both in the talking to guests and also continuing the processing of this material I'm working with. So it also contains some collages and the posters I made on the walls and um, also the, uh, uh, the podcast and the booklets online on my website where it looks like this. Um, like so, come in here, and then each um, 
seen um, together with its booklet, uh, together with its episode of the podcast. So if you click here, you come to the to the booklet. You can browse for that, and if you press the take icon, you come to a podcast where I read this and also translate it into Swedish, no, to English. So, that's that. Then we move on to how am I creating these booklets? Yes, as I told you, I took a picture of the television. That's one way, but in a different way, I gather visual material which then is printed and goes into the cut-up process. I also um, use um, the library, Super Search, and other libraries, the Athenborg Library, but also the Legimus Dyslectic Library, and um, I also trans, um, not transcribe, but I create audiobooks from text. So I also use Internet Archive, ARG, Google Books, and other stuff. I print it all, and it goes down to the cut up and reassembly process where it's turned into booklets. So these booklets, I will read only the titles because there's not enough time nearly to explain about them all. So one, the hyperreal gold and maps of masculinity. Two, uh, the deadliest catch part one, the sons of Ernest Hemingway. Three, the expanded productive Exhibitionary scene. Western masculinity. Real men are like cowboys, or are cowboys like real men? At Fishto Patriarchate, understanding the patriarchy with the help of uh, bell hooks and silver fang. The Great Recession and Masculinity Crisis versus Jack and Todd Hoffman of the Gold Rush series. Maintaining the appearance of authenticity, Deadliest Catch Part 2. Deadliest Catch Part 3. One Piece, Good Man versus Real Man, Masculinity Norms in Chapter 1 of Eshiro Oda's manga One Piece. So, and finally, we have Jimmy Dorsey's Unwanted Masculinity, and it looks like that it has two parts of the podcast, two podcast episodes. So this is a visual investigation of Jimmy Dorsey from the Gold Rush series. He is a white collar. Hello. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Hi, yeah. Are you been to school on? So, a visual investigation of Gold Rush Jimmy Dorsey. He is presented as a white collar, an ex real estate agent, sort of a hipster hunk dropped into the Alaskan wilderness. He declared it includes a close reading of all the scenes he appears in the series and a case study of discussions about him in YouTube comments. So
So how the research topic of this booklet is, how was the Midorsis masculinity portrayed in the first six episodes of Gold Rush? And in what ways does this affect the viewer's per, uh, preference in masculinity in their own real lives in the city? How can the concept of hyperreality be used to understand the authenticity of reality television shows? So it's two parts. The series I use here are mainly R.W. Connell's theory about hegemonic masculinity and its relation to other forms of masculinity. From his book, or his, hers, their book, Masculinities from 2005, Jean Baudrillard's concept of hyperreality and hyperreal maps. So, findings in this booklet. The use of hyper the concept of hyperreality can add to our understanding of authenticity in reality television, where something can be for real, but still directed and later edited into television shows. So, Jimmy Dorsey's masculinity was portrayed as a sort of counterweight to feature the frontier masculinity and blue collar masculinity of other participants as more desirable. And I see that there is a risk that this spills over uh, from the wilderness to the city. And there it might contribute to toxic masculinity. So, what is the podcast relation to the booklets? The podcast is, well, it was supposed to be a, an uh, expansion of the booklets. The idea was I invite guests, we read a bit from one of the booklets and we have a bit of discussion and also the guests I ask them about their actors' work and so on. So, 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 one second, just one second. So, these three guys here is R. People I, okay, I, I have found that I wanted to invite. And I wrote to them, extra publicity that Gassenberg's Konsthal can bring can really help us reach out to a large audience to spread the important work that you are doing with talking about masculinity. So. This is the intended sofa area. The artwork and the exhibition as a social, experimental, and productive space. An intended experiment. So, another method I am using is the logbook. Yeah, working with computers makes me really stressed. So, I therefore work with booklets uh, for logging and um, archiving of knowledge and material. So I chose to work with the Gold Rush TV series because I'm drawn to it and I need to understand more about the mechanisms behind this attraction. So, but the logbook. Uh, just some more words about that. It's basically a folded paper, like so. Toof, toof, and then I just print or write or type, keep this material. In doing that, I can divide a, a hard, a large task into smaller parts. 
which is very helpful when I try to do things that are very outside of my comfort zone, which is the case with uh, contacting people for or inviting them and so on. So, <clears throat> key questions in this project is how archetypes of masculinity are used in culture or and have been particularly the forms of masculinity that are presented in the wilderness in heterotopic places, other places, not necessarily fake places, but constructed, created, and twisted, and most important of all, different from our own place. Places with other rules, other requirements, such as the Alaskan wilderness, with the Gold Rush series, takes place, which is also referred to as the last frontier. And what does this frontier mean? Then I had to read up a lot uh, on that frontier myth because I think it's, it's used a lot. So this, uh, the experiments I choose to uh, have uh, are because I want to learn certain skills and learn some, yeah, so doing a podcast includes a lot of things. So I broke it down into smaller pieces. One, finding people to talk to. Two, uh, trying out and sit, setting up technology for recording it. Three, trying out methods of having conversations with guests in an effective and interesting way. Four, try out applications for editing and platforms for distributing a podcast. So I asked um, the class earlier this semester for helping me just a one experiment where we should read together from one of my booklets and then um, have a short discussion about it. So this turned out to become a, Alex was um, nice enough to, to help me with this. So this is about trying out and setting up technology for recording and also about the method of first reading together and then trying to discuss it. And I learned a really lot about listening to myself that I'm really bad at, that's point three. And also, of course, editing this and putting it together and distributing it. So what will I do after the MFA? I will work with my portfolio, making it um, look nice and I will send it out to different exhibition venues, and I will also write the exhibition proposals. I will continue to work with the Teaching to Transgress toolbox for another year, and also I will have to, I want to learn more about distribution of printed material. And also, I want to look at more about um, YouTubers and how they are engaged in creating masculinity by such things as, the, let's see here if we can find. I just found a little bit of this interesting guys. Um, Yes, here it is. So, like this guy here, Dan Hurt prospecting. So he is a gold digger on YouTube. So, Sorry about the commercial break. So do you know why some older men walk like this? Okay, before I tell you, okay. I want to ask you something. 
All right. So here. Hello, everyone. I want to do a little video today on the the Falcon MD20. It's a little tiny metal detector that is really, really, really good at finding fine, fine gold. With everyone. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And make sure you click that bell icon so you get notifications. Yeah. So I, I think this is interesting. So, professionalism in relationship to guest voice constyle. I've learned that uh, there is a, the silent knowledge, including two parts, both how to write proposals, be part of meetings and the official part, and the other part, which is more about how, as a um, collaborator, I need to present myself as a person who is uh, serious, who is able to collaborate and to have conversations and so on. And also third, um, in relation to an institution, there is possibilities to, um, in this official meetings, to find uh, possibilities for collaboration with the people working in that organization. So to sum up, um, this is a, in one of the collages. It's called Hyperreal Collage of Frontier Masculinity Number Five. So I've told you a bit about my inquiry, the different parts it includes, and a short description of it in relation to the learning outcomes. And if you are, you are interested, you can listen to more and look at the and read in this website. So thanks guys and uh, don't forget to become a patron and to subscribe to my channel. All right.